What's up guys, DRock1992 here. For this next video, as promised, I am going to be reviewing the follow-up spin-off sequel to 2007's Knocked Up, uh, 2012's This Is 40. Um, this movie stars Leslie Mann and Paul Rudd, um, who were originally in Knocked Up, but they get, they get their own movie, and this kind of expands on them in general. Seth Rogen and Katherine Heigl, they don't reprise their roles, but there's a few people that do reprise their roles from Knocked Up, but the major characters are Leslie Mann and Paul Rudd. Um, some supporting characters to tell you about. John Lithgow is in this movie. Um, I know him more as uh, I first got exposed to him. Uh, he voiced um, the king in um, the prince or whatever he was in Shrek, the first Shrek movie it animated, but that's how I was introduced to him. Uh, Megan Fox is in this movie. Um, more about her later. Uh, Albert Brooks is in this movie. Um, if you don't know, for those of you who don't know, Albert Brooks is a voice on The Simpsons. Uh, creator of The Simpsons. Co-creator, I think, with um, Matt Groening. Uh, but I'm getting too off. I'm getting too off track here. But anyway, um, I'll get into the movie. Actually, this movie has a 51% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, which uh, I'll talk about later. So, but anyway, uh, this is 40 is pretty much what you see in the title. Um, Leslie Mann and Paul Rudd's characters. Leslie Mann's character's name is Debbie. Uh, Paul Rudd's character's name is Pete, and they're they're about ready to turn forty. They're gonna each turn forty. Um, so the movie starts out where they uh, they have sex on Debbie's fortieth birthday, and Pete actually, unfortunately for Debbie, reveals that he took a Viagra to help him. Uh, to enhance him, pretty much. So, this doesn't make Debbie happy. They stop having sex, and Debbie's pretty angry that she's turning 40. Um, some occupations to tell you about uh, from the main characters. Pete owns his own record label store, um, and he is in trouble with it. Um, he's struggling, the business is struggling financially, uh, they are promoting the reunion of Graham Parker and the Rumor, uh, this band, I am, uh, but, um, Debbie, um, owns her own boutique with, uh, Desi, a girl named Desi, who is played by Megan Fox, and, uh, Jody, who's played by Charlene Yee, um, and they also, uh, as well as that, actually, Debbie's business is in trouble because one of the employees, Desi or Jody, more into that after, but they stole, one of them stole $12,000 uh, from the boutique store. So they're in trouble there, kind of. Uh... And Pete's place, Pete's record label store, is struggling financially, so they have that problem, as well as their sex life and their boring routine lives, uh, in the movie, and also their daughters. Um, they have a young daughter named Sadie, who is a a young teenager. Um, for those of you who for those of you moms that have had teenagers, um, yeah, pretty much. I, I, I have no words for it. And um, eight year old, an eight-year-old named Charlotte. Um, <clears throat> so they decide to try to freshen up their lives a bit after all of these problems. They decide to have a better, um, 
to be more romantic with each other, more spontaneous, things like that. And first off, they go to this fancy, fancy uh, resort and they proceed to get high on special cookies. Um, and they fantasize, and it's kind of funny, they, um, they fantasize about ways they would kill each other. Um, kind of funny, <laughs> but, pretty funny, but, um, but that's kind of what they do. Um, but, anyway... Um, another way they do it is um, Debbie wants to improve the marriage and family through exercise and being more connected with her father, who's played by John Lithgow. Um, Debbie tells Pete that she needs to that he needs to stop lending his father, and his father's played by Albert Brooks, needs to stop lending him money. Um, but he doesn't. He's not successful at telling him. You know, you need to stop. You need to stop asking for money, and he gives him money as a result, pretty much. Um. Then the big news. One of the big news is that Debbie goes to her gynecologist and discovers that she's pregnant. Um. And she starts out by not telling Pete about it. Um. She takes care of a little issue with her teenage daughter, um, Sadie. Sadie's been pretty much... She was on Facebook sending... Um, they kind of... Her and this other boy um, sent dirty messages to each other and stuff like that. And Well, actually, they've been picking on each other. Well, the kid... The boy's been picking on the girl, uh, Sadie... But, but anyway, um, teenage stuff, but um, Debbie goes to the school, to Sadie's school, and she yells at the kid, and as a result, um, as a result of that, she yells, that she lays it onto this kid, she, um, she scares the kid. Um, the kid's mother, afterwards, gets into, gets into an argument with Pete over this. And Pete didn't know that Debbie talked about, um, or was yelling at the kid. So they have, so later on they have a meeting with the principal, and pretty much the cup, or Pete and Debbie deny everything that happened. And they're helped out by the mother not being very nice to the principal and them. So it's pretty much all dismissed. Um, that's that's one part of the whole story. Another part of the story, um, Debbie actually suspects her employee, Desi, um, of stealing the money. And they go to prove that, to try to prove that she actually stole the money, Debbie goes out with Desi one night um, to a bar and uh, her club and um, they meet a Philadelphia, the members of the Philadelphia Flyers hockey team, and one of them hits on Debbie. And Debbie's kind of excited, you know. I'm 40 and I'm getting hit on. You know, it's um, she's excited about that, and but she gets a conscience and she tells the guy, you know, I have two kids, I'm pregnant, I have a husband. Um, and after, after all this, uh, Debbie confronts Desi finally about the stolen money. Desi denies everything, and she actually says that she gets some of the money that she has, because in the movie she's had nice clothes on and things like that, and she goes to clubs, and she's definitely got money. Um... But Desi says that she is a part-time escort. Um, and, uh, and basically, um, that's that. Um, she says that the other woman had a, or the other woman stole that money. Debbie goes to confront that other woman. The other woman admits it. Um, she admits that she did it. 
in order to get Oxycontin, basically, to support her Oxycontin drug habit. So she gets fired, and that's that for the whole um, situation there. Um, they, you know, the whole reunion, the whole spontaneous marriage type thing, it's not going as planned, and they're fighting a lot, Debbie and, um, Debbie and Pete are fighting a lot, which is causing, well, they're fighting a lot from their daughter Sadie and Charlotte fighting all the time, so that creates a ripple effect sort of, and um, they're fighting, and it's not all good. Um, the part about Debbie's father, Debbie's father is a man that they haven't been in contact with each other in three years. They haven't been, um, yeah, they just haven't been in contact with each other in, in three years, and um, they don't really interact with each other very much. Um, so there's an issue with that. Pete's father, of course, is, uh, asks for money all of the time, and, uh, Pete gives the fa his father the money, you know, out of guilt, kind of, I, I, I would think. Um, so they're at Pete's 40th birthday, and all hell breaks loose, pretty much. Um, Debbie, you know, she argues with, um, John Lithgow's character, her dad, you know, she argues with him about not spending time with her, not spending enough time with her, and not really getting to know her, and, um, Debbie's father says that, you know, you know, hey, I, I, my life's not perfect, I'm not, you know, I have children I don't talk to, I think, and stuff like that, and, um, and basically, uh, I mean, that's that with the whole situation. The big part of the story is where, the big part is where Pete overhears Debbie talking about the pregnancy. He gets very mad. And earlier in the film, Debbie asked him, what if I was pregnant again with a third child? Pete kind of says, you know, I, I kill myself kind of and something like that in the heat of the moment. He would say, I'd kill myself, I, I don't want a third kid. But, anyway, after hearing the news about Debbie being pregnant, Pete's angry. He goes on a bike ride to kind of clear his head and in anger. And um, he runs into a truck and argues with, or breaks the window of the truck and argues with the guy who, you know, they're trying to, um, he wrecks his bike wrecks the window of a guy's truck and they're arguing about the damages and all that paying for the damages and eventually the guy punches Pete in the stomach Pete has to go to the hospital with a uh, broken rib I think and you know broke uh, broken rib or ribs and um, so they go to the hospital and Debbie uh, pretty much reconciles with Pete because the father, or Pete's father, who he, he and Debbie didn't really get along throughout the movie, but finally they're getting along because, um, pretty much Pete's father says that, you know, it's because of you that the family's staying together, that you guys aren't separating at all or, or anything like that. So Debbie um, takes that in stride and she goes into the hospital room, Pete's hospital room, and they reconcile. They're actually reconciling and um, that's pretty much it. I mean, the end of the stories, they're, wa they're watching a small concert um, with a guy named Ryan Adams performing and... Debbie tells him, tells Pete, you know, go on, sign him for your label, and they do, and that's the movie, basically. There's some end credits at the end with, um, the kids, the kid 
uh, the kid who was teasing um, Sadie's mother, the mother during the principal's office scene, um, and she basically ad libs some certain insults uh, with Debbie P and the principal. So that was that was kind of funny there. But but anyway, um, talking about the movie and how I liked it, I did. I mean, I um, I like this movie. Um, I did not like it as much as as Knocked Up. I didn't think it was as funny as Knocked Up, but still very funny. Um, Judd Apatow again directs this movie. He does a good job, you know. Everybody pretty much does their job in this in this film. You know, they John Lithgow, he does a good job. Albert Brooks. Um, Megan Fox is uh, pretty much what she always plays, a sex symbol. And that's all right with me. I gotta say, that's that's all perfectly all right with me. You know, she uh, she can act too. Uh, but she definitely is known more for the sexiness. And um, she did a good job. Uh, Leslie Mann and Paul Rudd, of course, the big stars of this film. Uh, overall, I would have to give this a four and a half out of five stars. Just that little half star takeoff because it wasn't as funny as Knocked Up. Not as funny, but it was still pretty funny. So, um, and that's pretty much it for my review. Uh, D-Rock 1992, out.